This episode is made possible by our sponsor, Landmark College, the college for students who learn differently, offering comprehensive supports for students with ADHD and other learning differences, both on campus and online. Learn more at lcdistraction.org. Hello, this is Dr. Ned Hallowell, and welcome to Distraction. I'm here with a special episode brought to you by our wonderful sponsor, Landmark College in beautiful, beautiful Putney, Vermont, the college of choice for students who learn differently. And to help with this special episode, I am joined by one of our all-time favorites, Jessica McCabe, the host of How to ADHD which now, she told me, has 360,000 followers. So you should join and be 360,001. Not that many people follow something unless it's really worthwhile. And Jessica, she's just full of positive energy and wisdom and smarts and knowledge. And um, for her tender young age, she sure does know an awful lot. So welcome to Distraction, Jessica. Thank you. <laughs> I, gosh, you are just so good for my self-esteem. Probably everybody should be on this show just to just to hear how you it, talk about them. Thank it, you. It That's really kind true. of you. It is all true. So what was it you wanted to talk to us about in this special episode? So <laughs> I do work really hard to create a good show. I also lose things a lot. Um, and I finally uh-huh. tackled that on the channel. And I wanted to talk about it here, too, because while I was doing the research and writing that episode, I realized how much of a difference it made um, in my life that I lost everything. It was my first ADHD symptom that I remember. I would come home without my jacket almost every day. I spent way too much time looking through the lost and found box. Um, and I used to feel really bad about it. It yeah. affected my life in a lot of ways because I, then I wouldn't have my favorite whatever. Or like I remember in fourth grade, somebody gave me these really precious earrings. And they were the first time that somebody gave me real gemstone earrings. Um, uh-huh. It was a family friend and they were real topaz, which was my birthstone. Mm-hmm. And it was like two days before I lost them. And I felt so bad. And oh. since then, I've always told people like, don't give me anything nice because I will lose it. And I've also just carried around this sense of like incompetence and paid the ADHD tax of having to replace things so many times. Um, And I used to just think this was like this character defect. Like it was just something wrong with me that I can't, you know, this is why I can't have nice things. Um, And then I realized like doing this research, like it really is our ADHD that makes it so difficult to hold on to things. Um, yeah. We're often distracted when we put stuff down or we impulsively set it down for just a second and then end up doing five other things. And then when we go yeah. looking for things to make things yeah. more challenging, our brains don't filter out extraneous stimuli very well. So when we go looking for the thing, we see all these other things that need our attention. So we end up responding to these. Mm-hmm. And this, by the way, is also often why we're late. And so it has this incredible ripple effect throughout our entire lives that we lose things so often. And yes. I finally decided to tackle it. And how did you do that? Well, I took my mom's advice. <laughs> um, <laughs> she's she. So she always told us growing up, you know, have a place for everything and everything in its place, have a dedicated uh-huh. place for everything uh-huh. so that, you know, when you are distracted, you can still automatically put things where they go and you know where mm-hmm. to look for it later. So it's easily, mm-hmm. you know, it's easy to find it. Mm-hmm. Um, and for her, you know, that's the end of the story. And that's great. But the thing <laughs> is, like, for those of us with ADHD brains, you know, the very same parts of our brain that benefit from having a place for everything are also the ones that make it, you know, those are the parts of our brain that make it really hard to have a place for everything because like right. I don't know about you I walk into a room and I just explode like whatever right. <laughs> whatever right. got with me is suddenly just all over the room so right. it's really hard for me actually like I know there are some people with ADHD that can be extremely organized and that's like a coping yeah. mechanism for them um yeah. I try like every right. <laughs> every fall, like going back to school, I would try and like I'd have these elaborate systems that I would set up and I would just they would fall apart within like a week or two. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, from the research that I've done, I think the key to cutting back on losing things and I don't think it's ever going to be perfect. But the key to like reducing the amount of things that we lose is to make it more ADHD friendly to have a place for everything. Mm -hmm. So one of those strategies that I found is to um, do, you know, what's called putting things at the point of performance. So Mm -hmm. where we use the thing is where the thing should go. Mm -hmm. Um, And for me and for probably a lot of people with ADHD, that means having multiple copies of things. Um, Mm -hmm. I used to think Mm -hmm. it was a waste of money to do that. But then I think about like all the jobs I've lost from being late or, you Mm -hmm. know, the extra things that I've had to buy because I lost them. 
And it's actually more cost effective probably to just have a charger at every station that you tend to charge your devices at. So you don't, you know, port it everywhere and lose it and then don't have it. And then your phone dies and then you can't call work to tell them you're going to be late or whatever it is. So yeah, have a charger at every place that you tend to charge your phone. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, Mm -hmm. I tend to train my dog in the kitchen. So that's where I put her treats. I tend to need her (laughs) to leave me alone when I'm in the office. So that's where I put her bones. I've started really (laughs) being conscious about like put things where I will use them. Just such a good principle. No, you can tell I'm really passionate about this. I'm like, <laughs> I must, I must share this with everybody because I wish this is what I wish I'd known when I was in college. It would have made things a lot easier. Yeah, um, sure that, would've. Yeah, like put things where you're going to use them, and then also make it as easy as possible to put it back because mm-hmm. it doesn't matter if there's a place for everything if it doesn't actually end up in that place. Right. Um, but I tend to be really impulsive, really impatient, and so things like, um, like I have a coat closet, but. It's so much effort to open the door, like get a hanger out, you know, take my jacket off, put the jacket on the hanger, zip it up, like stick it back in, close the door. So I just got a coat rack and I just throw my coat on that. And now I'll actually do it instead of it ending up on the couch or, you know, on the floor. Mm -hmm. So you have to make the place user friendly, too. Yeah, exactly. And the cool thing is by making it user friendly for somebody with ADHD, it really makes it user friendly for everybody. So there's really no reason not to do this like minimize the number of steps involved, um, make it mentally easy by making it clear where the thing goes. So like label makers are really good for this. If you don't have a label Mm -hmm. maker, like a a post-it note or whatever, it seems so silly to have to do this, but it really does help our brains out so much if we don't have to process like, okay, I'm holding this thing. Where does this thing go? Like if there's just a label that says like, this is where it goes. It's like, okay, I don't even have to think about it. It's going to be so much more likely that I put it there. Um, clear containers. I never really understood why this was recommended for people with ADHD all the time. And then I got some and I'm like, oh, right. Because like now, you know, my dog's bones are in a clear container. So I don't have to like remember which container it's in or even read a label. I can just see them. And it's so much easier. Um, And then the other like couple tips, like make it satisfying or enjoyable. If you get a mini reward for putting it there. Like there's a key hook you really like, like it Mm -hmm. makes you smile every time you look at it. Like you're more Mm -hmm. likely to put your keys there. Mm -hmm. Um, If you have um, a pretty comforter or bedspread, like if you like the way your bed looks when it's made, Mm -hmm. maybe you'll be a little more likely to make it. And again, Mm -hmm. these are things where it's like, uh, that shouldn't matter, right? We get stuck in like shoulds and shouldn'ts and like, I should just do the thing. I shouldn't need this extra stuff. But this is the, mm-hmm. this is the way our brain works, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I think we should use whatever tools we have at our disposal. Absolutely. No, and, and, you know, the fact that you feel good once you do it as a natural reinforcer. Yeah, exactly. And we do. We need those little reinforcements because the the whole, like, well, you know, it'll, like, be good for me to get into this habit. It's just not motivating enough, <laughs> to be yeah. honest. Like, yeah. Yeah. when you've got a million other things going on, you've got other things you're thinking about. It's just like, uh, you know, you're not thinking, like, when you throw your coat on the ground, you're not thinking, like, oh, God, then I'm going to have to go dry clean it and this and that. It's just, like, in right. that moment, it's the easiest thing. So if you make right. the easiest thing to throw it on a coat hook, well, now you don't have to worry about it later. And then, like, this, this I think, is worth mentioning. A lot of times, like, people see, you know, walk into somebody's house with ADHD, and this has happened to me, um, mm-hmm. or somebody's bedroom with ADHD, and they're like, oh, God, this is a mess. Let me help you clean it up. Um, mm-hmm. I'm actually really opposed to this <laughs> because, like, if somebody comes in and helps us clean up and we don't know where things go, well, now we really have no idea where anything is. Oh, yeah, that's awful. Right? And so sometimes we have organizational strategies that maybe don't make sense to other people, but I'm a really big believer in, like, we should be the ones to clean up. Like, we can get support, like having a body double there, having somebody in the room with us, encouraging us or whatever, but we should be the ones to do it so that we know where things go, right? Right. Um, like this was part of the problem. My mom used to clean up for me all the time. And like (laughs) at the time I was like, oh, that's great. And then the next morning, like I'd go to look for my stuff and I have no idea where it is. Um, and then I never learned how to clean up myself. Right. And so now I'm an adult and I've no, like my apartments are always a disaster because like, I'm like, wait, there, you know, this apartment didn't come with a mom. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Not many apartments do. Uh, no, it's uh, it's really unfortunate. I keep I keep looking for the uh, for the apartment that comes with that as an amenity, and I, I have yet to find well, it. Well, if you get really wealthy, then you can just hire uh, someone to do everything for you. But even then, even then, you, <laughs> you you want the feeling of I'm doing some of this by myself. Yeah, and you want to be able to know where stuff goes. Like I, I've had a maid come and clean before, and I just like I'm completely lost for like a week. Like I don't know where yeah. they put anything. <laughs> 
Right, exactly, um, exactly. So at the very least, like, we should be involved in the decision-making process of, like, where things should go and, and then label them. Um, and then a couple more things is, like, this I learned from waiting tables, which is scan for strays. So, like, before you leave a room or at the end of the day, you scan for things that aren't where they belong and put them back as mm. you go. Because that's mm. generally a lot more ADHD-friendly than, like, especially if you're a student. If you're in college, like, going, you know, oh, yeah, Saturdays, I clean my room. Like, probably not, right? Like, mm-hmm. it's probably not right. going to happen. Right. But if you get in the habit of scanning as you go and at least the things you know you're going to need, like, oh, you know, there's a textbook on my bed. Like, I should probably put that back on the bookshelf or back in my backpack or wherever I need it to be. What's the line from waiting tables? What did you say? Oh, so scan for strays. So, like, look for anything that's not... Like as as a server, that, you're looking for like. What does that do with waiting tables? Oh, as a server, you're constantly looking for dirty dishes. You're constantly looking for like, um, you know, the coffee pot isn't where it's supposed to go. The trays aren't where they're supposed to go. You're ah, constantly like scan for strays. I, I waited tables for a whole summer, and I never learned about scan for strays. So that's that's a great principle. Scan for strays. Hmm. Yeah, and that hmm. way you you clean as you go, which is a lot. You know, it's just a lot more more tolerable. It doesn't feel like as big a thing, but you're constantly like cleaning up just a little bit and then it doesn't get as overwhelming, I think. Right. right. Um, And then like the last thing is keeping consistent. It can be hard like when you're moving, when you're going to college. um, But like if you try to have whatever spot you set up, have that stay consistent as possible then Mm -hmm. it's a lot easier because if a spot for something keeps changing, it disrupts our ability to put it there automatically and know where to look. So, like, I would deal with this when I used to think that having, like, lots of purses was a good idea. (laughs) So, like, I'd have, you know, my back, things could be, like, in my backpack or in this purse or in this purse or in this purse. Finally, I'm like, I get one purse and one backpack. Like, that's it. Because the fewer places that something could be, the less time we're going to spend looking for it. That's such a such a great (laughs) principle. The fewer Thanks. places to look, the more likely you'll find it. Yeah. And then the last thing is, like, get a tile. Like, seriously, do you use those, Dr. Hall? Oh, yes. Do you use tiles? I, 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 I have it on my keychain all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, anything that travels that's important, like a remote or, you know, your keychain or, like, I stick it in my bullet journal. Um, anything you, you do have to take from place to place, like, it's such a good idea to have, like, a tracking device on it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I use Tile. I'm sure there are other ones out there, but that, that's the one I was introduced to, and I like them a lot. As always, Jessica, you are a treasure trove of tips. You know, any of you listening, you can find many more by going to Jessica's website, howtoadhd.com. That's howtoadhd.com. And your YouTube channel is what, just How to ADHD again? Yeah, youtube.com slash How to ADHD. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Uh, Landmark College thanks you, uh, the wonderful sponsor that we have. (laughs) Learn more about how they help students with ADHD succeed in college at lcdistraction.org. That's LC for Landmark College, lcdistraction.org. I'm, I kid about it, but this truly is the best in the world at what they do. And uh, if you want to sort of get ready for college or supplement college or have it be your college experience and you have one of these wonderful brains that Jessica and I share and talk about, go to lcdistraction.org. Distraction is created by Sounds Great Media. The podcast is recorded and edited by the amazingly talented Pat Keogh. And our producer is the unbelievably awesome star of stage and screen, Sarah Curtin. I'm Dr. Matt Hallowell, and thank you so much for listening. <laughs>